take your Bible and turn with me to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15 in God's Word together this morning. We are blessed with this wonderful gospel of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Christmas always affords us in America, well, those of us in the church, the ability to come back to kind of recenter ourselves. Because you know that, that during the year you buy gifts for other things. Am I telling the truth? My mom, who's in heaven now, uh, she had this kind of strange thing. Uh, when it was her birthday, we'd buy her gifts. And when it was dad's birthday, for some reason, she felt like she needed a gift too. So she, we were always buying mom something in her life. And so we're gift-giving people. But for some, some of the things to us, I just believe this, we don't realize what we have. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? Well, the Christmas reminds us that Jesus came. Look on the screen. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. This is what he read last week. When the angel said to them, remember this, that when Jesus came, let me talk and take a moment of this to say this to you. You know these things. Just be reminded. When Jesus was birthed to his mother, she was a virgin. And, 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 and Bob Lapine in his book, I read it while I was gone, uh, about Christmas uh, dysfunctions, he said this, that when, when Mary and Joseph uh, had been betrothed to each other, they were young, and now they wanted to get married, and so Jesus messed up everything for them. Do you know that? He really did, because now she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, and it's by faith you've got to believe that, because you, you, there's no other way to believe but by faith. So the news was going around town that she, she was, must have had an affair. And so, so Joseph, I mean, all this wonderful party that they were going to have and to, and watch this, and to live with their family and enjoy was all messed up. And so they had dysfunction. But Mary heard these wonderful words that the Messiah was coming. But it was a secret to everybody else. Remember, the angel would have to come and speak. It was all, Joseph was, uh, uh, didn't understand it. In Matthew 1 and 21, the angel says that I want you to marry this woman. She's a, what's in hers of the Holy Spirit. And you, she will give forth a son. And you, Joseph, will call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. And so they were the only two that understood it. Now, I want you to get this. And the scripture, so the angel came on the night he was born and spoke to these shepherds, other guys who, who were busy about their business, about to have their world rock. Said, he said this, the angel said this, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for, notice this, all the people. Are you an all the people person? Beth, I was thinking about you while I was gone. Beth, you're one of the, all the people, and that wonderful husband of yours. You just, you all the people. Now watch this. This For unto you is born this day in the city of David. And this is what Pastor dealt with last week, a Savior. Is he your Savior? Is it a secret? Or is it an open, known fact that he's your Savior? But then it says this, is where I want to hang my hat with you today, who is Christ. The word Christ means the anointed Messiah. But now think about this. Other than the wise men, other than Mary and Joseph, it was a Christmas secret that no one else really knew. You say, wait a minute, Pastor, it had been prophesied. Yeah, it had. Since the time of Genesis in chapter 3 and verse 15, when that God said that, the, that this snake, that Satan, that Satan had come and caused Eve to fall from grace. And, and how the fact, he says, someday that Jesus is going to come and crush his head. Abraham believed, did he not? Pastor talked about it last week. Abraham believed in Genesis 12, chapter 15. He got saved believing that Jesus was coming. Isaac believed, Jacob believed, Joseph believed, and Moses believed. Moses in Deuteronomy 18, he said, to them, there's one coming who's greater than I am. Not only did, did Moses believe, but Samuel believed, Joshua believed, and, and David believed. David sat in his throne room and he said, God, you've brought me this far. And he said, David, this is nothing because there's going to be a day that there's going to be one who's going to come and rule on your throne that will be there forever. And this news got around Israel. It was no secret. In Psalm 110, the, the psalmist said that God's going to come and rule in all of Israel for thousands of years. We're looking for this Messiah. But they were not looking for my Messiah and your Messiah. They were looking for a ruler. Remember when Jesus came and we'll celebrate it the Sunday before Easter if the Lord doesn't return before then. We'll gather together for Palm Sunday, will we not? Remember Palm Sunday when all of Israel was in uproar and they finally believed that maybe this guy could be the Messiah. So they, they put down palm branches and said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But five days later, they all turned on him because he didn't come the first time to be the king of kings. He came to be our Messiah, our Christ. You say, you say preacher, I know this truth, but what does it mean to you? 
In 1 Timothy 2 and, and verse 3, the, Paul at the end of his life said, It's a good and pleasing the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, now listen to this. For there's one God and one mediator between men and God, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom. Friend, let me ask you this. Is it a secret in Jackson or not that Jesus is the Christ? I think it's a secret, don't you? I really do. I think it's a secret in our. I think it's a secret to our our family who are without Christ. I think it's a secret to the people who casually come to church. I think maybe it's become a secret to you that that was never known. And so when Jesus was born, there in the city of David, there are so few people there. And on that night, there they were, gave birth to the Son of God, and they came and they worshipped there that night. But listen to me. Joseph and his, and his wonderful wife probably wanted to go back to Nazareth to celebrate this baby with their family, but an angel came and said to them, don't stay here because there's going to, Herod's going to come and he's, he's going to hear the news that, that, that there's the Messiah that has come, the king has come, and he's going to come and kill everybody in Bethlehem, all the babies. And so here is Mary and Joseph taking the Christ down into Egypt. And I've been to the very cave where the, the Egyptians to this day believe that, that Jesus was taken by Mary and Joseph. And for the first two years of his life, did you, did you know the secret? That the king of kings spent his first two years hiding out in a cave in Egypt. Wow. He did that for you and I. We know nothing of his first 30 years except one instance when he was 12 years old. In Luke chapter 12, the Bible says this, that they go up to Jerusalem. He's back in Nazareth. They make the 90-mile journey. They go, they go into Jerusalem, and they stay there because it is a feast of Passover. They go back. They're three days out in the journey, and they look around. Where's Jesus? Now, how could you lose Jesus? And the Scripture says they go back, and they find him sitting. Right, Brother Henry? They find him sitting with the leaders, and they said they were astounded at his wisdom. And Mary just looks at him and says, why did you do this, Jesus? And the one thing that we know of his, his early years, he said this, the King James Version, I must be about my father's business. Isn't it sad that, that we can send missionaries to Africa, and we do, and we go. And it's amazing in Africa, they are hungry for the word of God that they've never heard. But on the streets of Jackson, Georgia, it seems as if it's a secret. Now, I'm not saying any of this to condemn anyone or to, to put anyone down, but let me ask you this. The God who saved thousands while we were gone, is he, is he not able to do that here? And if he's able to do that here, and we're seeing it just in a small awakening, imagine what God could do in 2023 if he tarries, if what is a secret becomes a known fact. So today, all I want to do is to give you encouragement. If you're a Christian today, what all I'm going to do is just a simple outline. I, I changed everything, and I know they're probably upstairs like, what in the world is he doing? But I, I changed everything on the plane on the way back. I, I, just, I just want you to hear this. I, I just believe this. If you're a Christian today, all God's saying to you is just grow in knowing who I am. See, if, if something's not a secret to, to you, you know it. But I, I like to know secrets. Anyone else? Not so I could go and tattle. I just like to learn things. Any, anybody need learners in the room? Come on, Larry Duke, you're a learner all your life. And, and I just want to learn. I just want to learn this. I, I, sit, I just sit and watch people. I just want to learn what they're doing. I'm just astounded by the different things in this world. I, I'm a lifelong learner. And can I tell you that what Pastor Rick sang this morning is just a scratching the top of who he is. So my challenge is going to be to you as a believer today just simply to, to grow, 2 Peter 3 and 8, grow in the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding of who God is. And then I'm just going to ask you, go and tell what you know. It's almost, that's, so, so I can leave now, preacher. You did that in eight minutes. I'm glad of that. I'm done with the message. No, you're not. not um, well, you think with me for just a moment for those who have never received him. Have you ever asked someone this question, why not? Have you ever asked anyone that? I, I know Danny has. I've been with him. I, I've heard him ask. I, I, he called someone not long ago. I remember it. Maybe time flies coming along. And he said, why, after church, God has dealt with his heart. He called someone and said, why not? So if you're in the room or watching online or see this this week or months from now, why? Was this, and it, this, why not? Can I, can I for a moment tell you in the room just who he is from a story? 
you're in Luke 15, and Jesus told a story. We read this together back in the summer, in the middle of June. We read this in our spiritual awakening series, and we dealt with a third of the three stories. But today, I want to go back for a moment, and it's just going to be a simple outline. I'm just going to talk with you about today this gift of Jesus Christ. If you, if you look at the next slide, Jesus is the perfect gift, is he not? He's the perfect gift for all people. No matter their circumstance, no matter where they've been, where they are, where they're going, no matter where they're born, what the deal is in, in their life, God, listen to me, sent Jesus for them to be their mediator, to be their Messiah, to be their anointed Messiah. So what we're going to do is just read this story today, and, and, and scholars tell us to do it kind of like this, always give the setting, uh, always tell the story, and always give the significance. That's all I'm going to do. Isn't that pretty simple? Jim, Jim, you could do that so well. You're such a brilliant teacher anyway that you could just do that together. That it's just, just there, there's the setting, and there is the story, and there is the significance. Say that with me. There's the setting, there's the story, and there's the significance. You see, if you're a lifelong learner, you'll do that. So here, here's the setting. Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Here's what the Bible says says, now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to Jesus. Now, this is the phenomenal and amazing moment in the past of Scripture that we are together. And the Scripture says this, and the Pharisees and the scribes, any in the room today? Nobody's going to own that, right? Like Henry and I teaching in Africa, nobody's going to say they're a lazy Cretan, are they from Titus? Pharisees and sad scribes grumbled saying, this man, now wait a minute, that was the baby who came in a manger that we know to be God has grown up and to be a man, and they've rejected him as Yahshua. They don't believe that he is their Messiah. They do not believe that he is the anointed of Christ. And so Luke, stressing the humanity of Christ, just says, they said this man. You see, the truth is this church is not Keith Joseph's church or Pastor Eric, or anyone else who preaches here. This is not this man's church. This is God's church. Now watch this. This man receives sinners and eats with them. Now you see, that's not a secret to you, and so you're like, eh, whatever. But if you're living under a bridge, as I saw on Friday going to Atlanta, Sherry graciously drove so I could study in the back as we carried my dad to the hospital for his surgery. They might be excited to know that there might be a program that could get them off the street. See, you and I are, are so used to these truths and they, because we're a part of us and we get, we get trapped in the world, don't we? We get trapped in this world. There's so many things that we've got to do and so much like that we lose the significance of what's significant and what is insignificant. I promise you today that what's insignificant is probably significant to you right now. Because you think it's significant that everybody would have a toy if they're a child for Christmas. Really? You think it's really significant today that everybody has to be at your house Christmas Day, and if not, you're going to be pouting for weeks. Let me tell you, it's not that significant. So Jesus here in this setting is being accused by people who've rejected him as Messiah, as caring for lost people. Aren't you glad that he came for you? Aren't you glad the word received is here in the text because it means he welcomes and associates with? I, I'm about to have a fit, so get ready. Those of you who have been really calm and quiet, I'm, I'm just about to have one. I'm just going to tell you it's going to come. Just, just be ready. You think Pastor Eric was on steroids last week? Just get ready here in a moment. You see, I realized this. I was born in darkness. I was born without hope in the world. I was born in a good family that would have helped me economically to get where I, I had clothes on my back, I had shoes on my back, I had food in my stomach. I had everything that the world would say would make me success. But there was something inside of me that was dead and was dying and diseased me spiritually and had me in darkness, had it to my own direction. And I would have been lost my entire life. I would have been divorced many times. I, would have been, I could have been a drug addict. I could have been a pervert. I could have been a thousand things. But in my darkness, God came to rescue me. He came to where I was as a little boy and opened my heart to the darkness and said, I want to tell you about my, my son, Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah, who is the Son of God, who is the mediator. He came and left heaven and reached down into the darkness of your light. John 8 and 12, he is the light of the world and shared his light with me. And at seven years of age, he says, you need me more than you need all of these other things. And I didn't understand it all, but I knew at the age of seven that I was in darkness and I needed to deliver her. 
You see, you forget the significance of that. And some of you are like, I've heard your story before. Well, tell your story. If you have a story, surely you want to tell it. And God redeemed my life at the age of seven and set me on a different course in my life that I'd ever been before and told me to do different things than I've ever done. And I'll tell you, in these years, the last 30 years of my life, I've passed just like a moment in the night. God has kept me from things. He's brought me into, through things and delivered me and worked and worked and worked. And what does God want to do in your life? Friend, listen to me. If God has brought you to the light, you are blessed. You are blessed and you are headed to heaven today that no matter how dark it gets and how discouraging it is, God is taking you on a journey that's winding upward. It is not winding downward. Though the outer man is perishing, the inner man is being renewed day by day by God. But if you're not careful, you'll get locked into a moment. Well, I'm not dating, so I'm, I'm, I'm defeated. No, that has nothing to do with your life. You see, that on that day, when they announced the news that, that Jesus was receiving sinners, the sinners were saying, hallelujah. First Baptist Church, all that we are are saved sinners telling the story of a sanctified Savior who has come to deliver a lost and dying world, and they need to know that. But if you never go to where they are in their darkness, they will never know that. And for many of us, we are so tied up in our mess and things that are insignificant, we never get to go. I'm not talking about going overseas. I'm, I'm talking about going to Ingalls and to Kroger, going into the high school, going into your place of work, and someone asks you how you are. You say, I'm blessed more than I'm deserved. Like Don Mapp, someone asked him in Ingalls, how are you? By the time he got done, they probably didn't want to ask. Of all that God had done in his life, what's God done in your life? What has God done in your life? What is he doing in your life now? This is the setting for this. Here's a group of people that says, I don't want you, Jesus. You're this Messiah that common people want to be around. You see, they didn't believe that the Messiah was coming to redeem them. They didn't think they needed it. Have you been saved so long that you've forgotten that you are a wretched sinner? Have you forgotten that you are as dirty as the people that you are dirty and on? If not for the mercy and the grace of God, we wouldn't be in this place. You wouldn't be watching us online. But Jesus reached down in your dark and said, I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to bring you out. But now watch the love of God. He says, let me tell you a story. You know what we do, don't you? If somebody's dogging on us, we'd blog about them. We would FaceTime about them, or excuse me, we'd Facebook about them. We'd go tell everybody the problem and how what they've said about us, but not Jesus. And can I tell you, I'm glad I'm in a, ch I'm in a church that doesn't choose to do that either. There's this story that he tells now, you know what a story is of Jesus. It's called a parable. A parable is simply a truth that's, that, that is put beside of a story. And that by the time you get through with the story, you understand the truth. And I think that for most of us, uh, we enjoy a good story. Sure, he sure reads a lot of Christian fiction. And I'm like, why does she read that thing? I want to know the truth. And, and so, but then I'll pick up one when she's not knowing that I'm looking or she's looking. And I'll read like, Wow. And so here's a story that Jesus just lays out in front of them. So he told them a parable in verse 3, and he said, What man of you having a hundred sheep? Now, just, just pause for a moment. This probably for you doesn't mean much because you're, you're not a, a sheep herder or breeder or buyer. But for them, it meant everything. What man of you have a hundred sheep, if he's lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds him? And when he's found it, he lays it on his shoulders. He rejoices. And then here's the thing that blows me away, friend. I don't know about you. When he comes home, I mean, it's just the sheep, right? It's just one. He calls together his friends and his neighbors stand and he says to them, rejoice with me. For I found my sheep that was lost. Now, anybody struggle with that? It's a sheep. I mean, food is expensive. You're having all these people over. I mean, it takes up your time. I mean, you don't have enough time to do what you want to do as it is. And now you're going to stop because it's one of the animals over here. And you're like, like what, is, what is this story? Well, if you lived in that culture, you'd know this, that anybody that had 100 sheep was wealthy. 
Because a sheep could do so many things. You could take the wool off of a sheep and you'd make money that way. You could eat the sheep for, for meat or, or it, oh, you could really, the top would be to take it down into, into Jerusalem and sell it there for a sacrifice. And, and so now think about this, write this down, it's in your notes. People value what benefits them. Don't think. So this, this was important to these, the, these people that, that they value it. And I, and I want to ask you this, what do you value? Who do you value? What place do you value? Where, where is value found in your life? You see, there was this sheep, and the Scripture says he leaves the 99. Now, here's what's amazing kind of to me as well. You do know the Bible calls people, identifies them. Now, this is, this is hard as sheep. You all know the story. If you, if you read the little book, Psalm, Psalm, the, the Shepherd's Heart to Psalm 23, he describes the sheep. He says that they're ignorant. That's us. We wander away and we get something to remind you. Do you know a sheep, if, if, if it gets in too deep of water, will stick its head down to the bottom and will drown if, if someone's not there to pull it up? And God calls us this way. Do you know when Isaiah, when Isaiah 700 years before Christ, when he's prophesying, chapter 50 about Jesus, he said that he was led as a lamb to a slaughter. He's silent. He said this, God laid upon him the iniquity of us all because all of us like sheep have gone astray. Wow. So he goes. Now watch this. Secondly, people stress, do they not? Watch this. Write it down as it comes up on the screen for you. People stress over the loss of valuable things. Anybody? If it's valuable to you and, and you lose it, you, you'll kind of stress. Uh, I know some of you kind of would be you're like, you're just in sin, preacher. Just go on and say it. When I, when I travel anywhere, I, I, just, I take my ring, two rings off. He's like, well, don't people know you're married? If that's the only reason they know I'm married, I'm in trouble. You know why I take them off? So when I'm over there, I just don't lose anything. I mean, Henry Bagby loses glasses while we were gone and they were on his face. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> but let me ask you this. Are you stressing today at Christmas? Have you lost something that's valuable to you? You say, I, I, I'm not following you, preacher. You see, people stress over what's valuable to them. In this story, he says there's this man that owns this hundred sheep, and he loses one of them. He stresses over it because it was so much value to him that he went out and he looked for it. You probably are like I am sometimes when I see all the messes in the world and all that we hear. Blaine, I do this. You, I don't know if you do it or not, but like sometimes you're like, what do we do? Anybody? Like, what can we do? I've been rechallenged and charged while I was gone to be reminded, as I do every day here, that Jesus is the one fix all answer for no matter what you face. There's no one else but Jesus. So the Bible says he goes and until he finds it. Now, watch this. The Bible says that when he found it, he put it up over his shoulder. Can you imagine that lamb that day as it came across the shoulders of the one who cared? Why did he do that, friend? Was it, was it because he was injured and he cared for him? Or was it because that sometimes when, when, when a shepherd finds its sheep and it's there and it's kind of just bebopping around, anybody ever discipline their children? If you know anything about a shepherd, sometimes they'll take that, that other end of the staff and they'll just whack a, a, a a sheep right here on the leg. Sometimes they even break a leg. So was he putting it over? And some of you listen to me today. God loves you so much. You're his child. Hebrews 12, 5 through 11. But he's had to discipline you. But he's put you up on his, because you're so valuable. He didn't let you down. Don't quit. Get up. Receive his healing. For others of you today, listen to me. You see yourself in that lamb, don't you? You just would love for somebody to pick you up in their arms. See, some of you today, you're all upset because you've lost this person or that person. Your health is gone or finances are not what it needs to be, and you're just kind of, you're just really stressed right now. Can I tell you, the, the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world so values you that no matter what you get into, He's going to pick you up and put you on His shoulders. David, He's carrying you all with Olivia right now. 
He's carrying you with cancer and family. He's carrying you with disease. He's carrying you. But for some of you today, if you've made a God out of anything, I want to tell you this, be careful. Because God will take it away. Because no one will be Lord but him. Now watch this. When he gets the sheep, he brings it home, and they have this party. Listen to this. Write this down. People celebrate when they recover valuable things. Don't they? When they celebrate. We, we did not know the young so they came to church. But, man, I was praying for you in that day. That Kelly, Kelly, Kelly texted me on a Friday and, and said, Jeremy Young has called and wants to talk to you. I'm telling you, I was dirty. I, I, I'd been on a mower. I was, I was filthy. I had 20 other things to do. But it didn't bother me in that moment. You didn't see me, and I didn't see you, but I called that number, and you answered. Because you see it, and when you hung up and you said, I need to get baptized, I knew what that meant. And here I was in my yard, Randall, with my old dirty blue jeans on and a, and a shirt all sweaty, and I couldn't help but just to go around just a little bit because I wanted to celebrate that God had met, caused me to meet somebody valuable to him that I'd never met before. Jared, the, the day that you got it right with God, I've been celebrating ever since that God put you up on his shoulders and now you're standing with Jesus and leading your home and your two children and now being a deacon in this church. Only God could do that. Only God could do that. So I want to ask you today, who in this room needs to go out of here and put somebody up on your shoulders? Who do you need to go out and get on your knees before them and maybe beg, 2 Corinthians 5 and 20, to plead with them to come home to Jesus? You see, it's a secret to the world, but it's not a secret to us who know. So there is this story that's already touching us in the setting of sinners and people who think they don't need a Savior. But what's the significance? What is the significance? It's right there in the text of this chapter for us. Chapter 15, the Bible tells us in verse 7, he says this, Just so I tell you, in case you didn't get it, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. What in the world does that mean? In heaven, there's a Savior who values you. John 3 and 16, he values you. There is, listen to me, write it down. Jesus came from heaven as Messiah for all who will believe in him. Romans 3, 21 through 25 says these words, but now the righteousness of God has been revealed apart from the law, although the law and prophets bear witness. The righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all who believe, for there's no distinction. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and all have been justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who God put forth as a payment. So I want to tell you this today. The significant is that, that when someone gets saved, all of heaven's rejoicing. But for those of you that have become, listen to this, carnal and forgotten what real miracles are, somebody gets baptized, you go, you hear about 500 people getting saved. You're like, well, I wonder if they really did. You just lose the joy of it. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that we take for granted the greatest gift that we have on the face of the earth. But in heaven, they don't take it for granted. Every soul has value to God. And every soul is, is rejoicing that in heaven today that God came down and saved them. See, but some of us go through some things that causes us to lose value. You see, friend, today Christmas is not about what we think it's about. It is about the Christ who is the anointed Messiah who says this, everybody has value. So Christian, do you believe this with me? Still today as it comes on the screen, Jesus is looking for people to redeem, isn't he? But who's going to tell them? Who's going to tell them at your Christmas get-together? We'll have Christmas Eve service at 3 and 5 o'clock. But who's going to tell them around that time? Who's going to open their home this year to someone and say to them, come over to our house? You say, I don't want to have them over my house. They just disrupt our house. But what would happen if they get saved this time? You'd give up sacrifice. First Baptist Church, just grow this year knowing who he is and give them what you've been given. 
We hope that you would reach out to us at info at jacksonfbc.com with your questions and check out more of our ministries at jacksonfbc.com.